welcome to the Astro Imaging Journey channel. Please enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome back to the channel. And in this episode, I'm going to be replacing the uh, mini PC I have out on the OTA. Uh, as many of you may already know, I've been running a remote PC that's been mounted at the top of the OTA. It's a Kotlix GN41 and it's been working great. You know, it's a Windows 10 mini PC, fanless, you know, it serves its purposes. All the USB ports can plug right into it. And actually I have it right here. I've already taken it off. So let me pull it up. So here it is, um, you know, got a couple USB ports on this side, a couple on that side, you know, and it's relatively small. I mean, there's the size of my hand there. So it's, it's not too bad. Um, the problem I've had with it is one, as I'm, I don't know if I mentioned it in a recent video or not, is there's no auto power on. So when power is applied, it doesn't power on. You have to turn it on. Uh, not a huge deal, uh, you know, we got to go out and set up the scope anyway. So when we power up the scope, we power up the PC and everything's happy. By the time I get back inside to remote into the device, it it's online, it's ready to go. Uh, however, part of the problem with that is the power button is missing. So let me see if I can get in here. You can see right here, so you can see right there, that hole right here is where the power button should be. But if we can get the light shined into it, you can see right there, there's the circuit board, the power button, well, that has since broken off and it is no longer, well, it's, it's still usable. I can short out using a wire, a couple uh, points in there and it'll power on. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's been, it's been what I've done all this year. This broke, in the winter of last year, here we are, October of this year, year. So it's been operating like that for almost a year. Not a huge issue. Not a huge issue. However, if it had power on capability, uh, power on, on power restore capabilities in the BIOS, it would be a non-issue. So to that end, I've been looking. I've been trying to find one that was cheap enough, capable enough that had the power on, the auto power on feature that I could replace this with and not feel too terrible about. And I did, and it is the Geek Plus. Don't have the specs here. I'll, I'll link it into the description as to what this is so that you can check it out for yourself. Uh, one of the nice things about this is five USB ports as opposed to four on the other one. All of them are USB three and they're all on one side. If we look at the Kotlix, we have two USB three ports on this side with a USB C and then we have two USB 2 ports on this side. So they're on opposite sides. Not a huge de deal when I had it on top of the OTA. I had a couple coming down on this side, a couple in, coming in on that side, not a huge deal. The only one that needed the USB 3 was the imaging camera. So, uh, you know, being limited in that by having two USB 2 and two USB 3, not a huge issue, uh, but this one having 
five USB threes will be nice. There is no USB-C on this device. However, it does have dual HDMI ports. It is Wi-Fi built in and as well as uh, Ethernet. It does come stock with Windows 10 I, Home, I believe pre-installed on an M2 hard drive, uh, but we're going to be swapping that out. One of the problems I was finding was trying to find one that will take the hard drive that is in this one, which is a two and a half inch uh, standard hard drive, like you would have in older laptops. A lot of them now have the M2 slots, but no standard uh, hard drive or solid state drive type uh, connections, SATA connections and capability. So I found one. Let's let me adjust the camera. And so we got a top down view and let's uh, let's see what we got here. All right. So here we are. Let's get this going. Double check my mic here. Yeah, we're still good. So first thing I want to do is I want to pull the battery or not the battery, but the hard drive out of the old uh, laptop or the old Kotlix. So these will be two little Phillips. And on the Kotlix, as you can see, it's just two little screws. There's this little plate right here. And the hard drive is right underneath that plate. And just lift up and slide out. And there we go. So we'll put this back together. I do have other spare hard drives. And I will be uh, reusing this for something else at some point. What I am not sure yet, but we will, we will figure that out at some point. Okay, so I will set this off to the side. And now for the Geek Plus. Now, it does come with this little adapter here that has the SATA connections to on a little ribbon cable. We'll open that up here in a minute after we get the, this opened up. So first we need to take off these feet to get access to the sprues. And I like to try to just keep them on the corners where they came from. They're all the same, but just so that we can get them all back where they should be when it's all said and done. And if you'll notice, I have the Geek logo. This plate right here is facing me. So I know the orientation for little Phillips. Now on this particular one, this bottom plate is recessed down in there. So if we're lucky, nope, we are not lucky. So I need to now get different little tool. And these are the tweezers. Let's see if we can get those in there. And there we go. So to do that, let's just pop that back on there real quick. So couldn't shake it loose, didn't want to bang it or anything like that. So got these little tweezers, any little hook, uh, needle, anything that can fit down in any of these little holes right here. Just pop it in there. 
a little bit of leverage up and it pops up. And that gives us access to the inside. And so there's my 128 gig M2 drive, which I'm going to leave that in there. Um, Cause I believe this is two gig, isn't it? No, this is 500 gig. Okay. I might have to image that at some point and put it on a larger drive, but either way, the 500 gig worked. I'm going to leave the, uh, the M2 drive in there for now. And we will, let's get that ribbon cable out of here. So hopefully, let me grab a little pointer here. You can see this little connector right here. This is where the ribbon end will slide into. So let me get that installed and then we'll get the hard drive mounted. There's just a little flap right here that we just lift up. Set the ribbon down on it and then close that door. So let me set it down so I have both hands to work with. And then, apologies for the dog. You can see on the bottom of the plate here, this was the plate we took off the bottom. You can see there's a slot right here for the hard drive. It's got mounting holes on either side. So we will install that. Looks like if you look at the, the way the holes marry up here, it looks like it's going to need to be like that. And yep, so let me get these screwed in and we'll be back. Now, if you noticed, I didn't really tighten these down yet. I just left them loose in case I needed to make any adjustments. Now I'll go back and tighten everything down. And now, if everything worked correctly, this should be correct. Yes. So we can take our ribbon cable right here. There's our data side. This is our power side. And that will match up very nicely. So we can press that in. And that fit nicely. Okay, now this end is sitting up just a little bit. I don't know why. And that is because of these land connections. So let me loosen these up and see if there's any play. No, there is not. Okay. So it's not a huge thing to do the initial test. Uh, what I can do is I can get this powered on. I can 
temporarily screw these down, get it powered on, make sure I can boot into Windows, and, uh, and then what I can do is I can take the data off of the standard drive, put it on the M2 drive, if I see fit. So let me, uh, let me temporarily screw these down just to hold it so I can flip it over and we'll be right back. Okay, temporarily I'm going to add these back. I can always pull them back off. But for now, since weather being the way it is, I will not be putting this out there. And I will be taking these feet off eventually anyways. Um, because if you notice, I have a Velcro strip on the old Kotlix. Uh, I will be doing another thing here on this one so that I can mount it onto the OTA. And these, eh, they, with the curvature of the OTA, they might be able to stay. I'll, I'll see how that works. So let me get the camera repositioned and we'll get this connected up. Uh, first, let's do this while we have it here. Um, as you can see here, I've got a little portable monitor. It is uh, USB-C, HDMI capable. It's powered through USB-C uh, power connection. It is a 4K monitor. Uh, I love this thing. It's portable when I go on job sites or whatever. And all I have is my little 13 inch monitor. This gives me an extra 15 inch monitor, a secondary monitor, extra workspace. Uh, both monitors are 4K then. And I'm not having to, you know, I've got the real estate I need for when I'm doing stuff. So I already have this set up. So all I have to do is take the HDMI, plug that in. And I do need my keyboard and my mouse. And here is my power connection, but I'm not going to plug that in just yet. Now you'll notice I am using a USB non-wireless keyboard. I don't need the mouse just yet. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that because we need to get into the BIOS. So actually I could. Yeah, that'll work. You can see it there. So let me get this over. And I will probably have to invert the image, but that's okay. Make sure we're still good on that. Still good on that. Yep. Good. Okay, so I'm going to plug in. And as you can see, it already powered on and it's coming up here. So I'm just going to hit the delete key and I have my BIOS. So as you saw, I didn't do anything. So it's an AMI motherboard. Uh, we are looking at two hard drives, the 128 gig M2 and the 500 gig hard drive, six gigs of memory. And it is a Intel Celeron 1.5 gig processor. More than enough for what we need to do. And why did I lose my keyboard? All right, so we're back, as you can see, 
little bit of a change up. I've got a new keyboard and an actual mouse here. The mouse actually comes into the keyboard. It, uh, the other keyboard just quit working for some reason. So I have a spare, it's a little dusty, but it's from uh, one of the PCs that's running. So I know this keyboard works. So let's get this powered back on. And let's see if we get anything. All right, there we go. So we already went through what it has. Uh, power on type, auto power on. That's one of the things we wanted. Uh, wake on LAN, don't care about fast boot. I don't like the fast boot myself. A lot of people do, um, but it just helps to be able to break into the BIOS if you need to. Um, rest of this it's fine so we've got hard disk so we got fixed boot order priorities so i want okay legacy hard disk so i don't know if UEFI is supported. Um, so we have the hard disk, Windows Boot Manager, and that's the 128 gig SSD. And I do not see the other hard drive listed. So if I go to Legacy, I just have hard disk. Uh, let's save and reset. I may not have put the uh, ribbon cable on correctly. We'll find out. Let's see if that works. Reset. Yes. Now, if this boots into Windows and asks us to configure it, I know it's booting to the M2 drive. If it boot in, boots into my normal windows that came from the Kotlix, then I know it's the updated version. Okay, so it did not like that. All right. So I'm going to power this off. And let me do a little reading and see what's going on here. Okay, we're back. So as you can see, I've got this flipped over and I double checked and this is installed the correct way. It does connect right there. We were seeing it in the BIOS. We just couldn't select it on the uh, boot order. It, for some reason, wanted to uh, only boot to the uh, little M2 drive, which I have right here. I've already gone ahead and removed it. It normally would be right here, but I have removed it. And I'm just going to place this on here. And hopefully, that is the problem. It was recognizing it. We saw it in the menu. It was seeing this and the other hard drive, but it would not select it, <clears throat> would not allow me to select it. So I've removed it. Let's plug it back in. Let's get back into the BIOS. It is the delete key to get into the BIOS. So I'm just gonna be tapping on that while it's coming online. And you can see here the M2 is no longer installed, but the SATA hard drive is there. And we had it there to be initially. So if I come over here to boot, now our hard disk is 
in the boot option. And it was not there prior. So, um, UFI, okay, so it did not like, yeah. So it wants to be in legacy mode with this hard drive. <clears throat> and no M2 installed. So that's quite interesting. So we will save this and we will reset. And let's see if it comes into Windows. Reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media. That is interesting. That is quite interesting. Um, so let's get back into the BIOS and switch over to the other mode from Legacy. All right, so let's save and reset. Now let's see if it boots in. Wow, that is quite interesting. It did not like that either. Let's disable fast support. And now we're just doing some troubleshooting. And it did not like that either. That is quite interesting. Okay, I'm going to put the hard drive back in here. And uh, let's try to boot to this. Let's just make sure the hard drive's still working. Okay, that is back. And installed in the original hard drive. And I don't have my power cable. I thought, oh, that's, that is the headphone jack. Excellent. Now I need a piece of wire to go across there. Okay, so as you can see, we are booted into Windows. Um, put the hard drive back into the old Kotlix and it booted right in. So I'm going to shut this down and put it back in the other enclosure, the Geek Plus, and we will we'll see what we get. There's got to be a compatibility mode of some sort. I just have to figure out what it is in the BIOS. So we'll be back after I get it in back and installed in the other one. All right, so we're back in the uh, new PC. And as you can see here, it is being recognized. I am fast boot disabled, legacy, and it is my first boot option. So we will leave it as is right now, save and exit. And let's see if it comes up. Okay, that did not work. All right. We will try one more thing. Okay, this is going to take a look. It, it's got to be the master boot record on the drive. It clearly works on the other one. It's not compatible with uh, this BIOS for some reason. So I'm going to have to do a little research, but I think uh, I'm going to leave it right here. And after I figure something out, I will cut back in on the video. So see you in a few. Okay, and we are back. So what have I done up to this point? 
Uh, well, I've done a little troubleshooting, and as you can see, we've got the, uh, the original Kotlix back here. Uh, the new Geek Plus is underneath it. Uh, right now, I am booted up on the original Kotlix mini PC. Uh, what I used was the this thumb drive right here. It is a Ubuntu 20 uh, Linux bootable drive. And that allowed me to get into the uh, drive on this device here on the Kotlix. And I was able to see that there was a C drive with a couple part with three partitions. There was a D drive with a couple part or with a single partition. So it the data is there, and clearly because it will boot under in the Kotlix, that's fine. I then moved the hard drive down to the Geek PC, did the same thing, booted into Linux. All I saw was the D drive. I only saw the one partition. I did not see the other partition. So that, that was a little concerning. So what I then tried to do was since it booted up in Kotlix just fine, I then used my Windows recovery drive, booted to that, it couldn't recover. It, since it couldn't see that other partition, something was amiss. So what I'm going to do now, which I've already done and I'm just gonna show you uh, what I am going to, uh, let, me, let me backtrack. I've already backed up the drive and I'm going to put that back up onto another drive. So what we have here is a Cronus True Image 2021. Uh, not, familiar, not sure if you're familiar with that, but I use it from time to time, both at work and uh, personally. This is my personal license. Uh, I like it that much. I actually purchased a license for it. And you can see here that we can do a backup and recovery. It's a bootable drive. So it boots into its own, I believe it's a Linux distribution with the true image software loaded. And you can come in here and do what I'm gonna demonstrate. And we can come up here to backup. We're gonna say disk and partition backup. And you can see our various disks. Now this disk one, this NTFS drive, I don't care about that. There's nothing on there. So I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is disk four. This actually has my Windows partition on it. So that's what I wanted to back up. So I made sure disk four is selected so that all three partitions underneath are backed up. We'll click next, and then we have the backup location. So we just do a browse, and you can see here I've already backed it up. So we would just give it whatever name we want or let it generate the name. And this is this uh, two terabyte uh, external drive that's connected via USB. So right now we're operating completely off of the Kotlix PC right now. We, we would click OK, make sure everything's good, click Next, and let it do the backup. Now, I've already done the backup on there, so I'm not going to do that right now. What I am going to do is I have this spare hard drive right here. It's a one terabyte hard drive. I'm going to move everything over to the Geek Plus mini PC and restore that drive four to this hard drive because I know this hard drive, it this hard drive had Windows 7 on it and the 
mini PC would try to boot to this drive. So now Windows 7 hadn't been updated in a while. Uh, it was an old drive I had laying on the shelf. And when I used the Ubuntu, I was able to mount the drive, look at what was on it. It was a, a Windows install. So I know that, and then I would reboot it into it and it said it was Windows 7, uh, but it froze, uh, you know, it couldn't load a driver that it needed. So it hung on the, on the boot, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to wipe this anyways. So we will uh, get this reconfigured here and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we are going to boot in. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure it boots to my true image drive. So let's get into the BIOS and make sure that is set. So it will be USB key. That should be fine. So we will save and let's make sure it comes up into true image. And it tried to come into Windows. So it's trying to boot off of that drive. Um, interesting. Uh, let me do this again. Okay, I think the problem here is that we were set to legacy. We don't want the legacy. So let's do SanDisk. That'll be fine. Yes. That looks better. Uh, fast boot is disabled. That's fine. So let's save and just save and reset. And now we're booting in. So we want number two here to be a Chronos two image or true image. Okay. So now we're going to do a recovery. And we're going to select that file. Let's There we go. That looks better. And we'll use that one next. Uh, recover whole disks and partitions. Yep, that's fine. What to recover? I have zero idea what track zero is, so we are not going to select that. And we need our one terabyte. All right, so let's Let's actually back up a step. Let's go to the tools and utilities and wipe that drive. So let's cancel. Okay, so we'll let that finish up. And when it's completed, we'll try to do the recovery. So we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, my shirt has changed 
and I just wanted to give an update. I had actually concluded the video, but I went back, I did a little bit more research, and as it turns out, the this Geek Plus device, which this is a little disheartening to me, but the Geek Plus uh, device cannot boot to that SATA drive. It's not capable of doing that. So as you can see on the screen here, this is my desktop, but this is the desktop from the Kotlix. But I'm plugged into the, G the uh, Geek Plus. If we got here, here's my Kotlix. The original hard drive is still in there. And it is, I am now on here. So how did I get to that point? Well, turns out I was mistaken with the Kotlix. The Kotlix actually has a hardwired uh, SSD drive. It is part of the motherboard. It is 64 gigs. That's the, the one that we did a backup on. Uh, hopefully I have a screenshot of that. And we initially tried to put it onto the drive and boot to it and it just wasn't working. Uh, that is because that was the SSD drive on that motherboard. And I started to remember that it too did not like booting to the SATA drive, which is what I wanted to do. So to that end, I went back I on the, on the Kotlix, I did a full backup of both drives, both the SATA drive and the SSD drive, the 64 gig SSD. And then I restored those images to the Geek Plus, the 64 gig SATA. I restored that image onto the 128 gig M2 SSD. And the 500 gig SATA image I restored to the one terabyte uh, hard drive in this device. It booted up first time since now, obviously I had to go into uh, BIOS, set the, reset the boot order, all that good stuff. We went through all that earlier. Um, and once I got that, it booted off the M2 SSD it booted into Windows. It came up just fine. Um, now, I will say that initially my initial thoughts were when I had thought I, I had ended the video and everything, I went, there was the Windows base install on the M2 drive already. I went through the install process I took care of all of that and I then backed up that as an image. So now I have a backup image that I can use uh, for this device or another device or what have you. It's a licensed Microsoft image, so I can use it for another device at some point if I need to. Or I could put it back onto this and have a fresh copy if I ever decide to quit using this for my remote observatory PC. And to help illustrate what we have here, I'm currently running Windows updates because I haven't actually had this on in a week. Uh, but let's go over here and let's do disk management. And once this pops in, you will see we have some unallocated space. So we got six 61 gig of that 128 gig that's unallocated because the image that we used was uh, you, was only 64 gigs. So we have some unallocated space there. And on disk one, we also have 465 gigs worth of space because we only had a 500 gig storage device before. Now we have a one terabyte. Uh, so this is easy enough to uh, change. We can just extend the volume. Let's 
see available selected yes okay add add finish and now this one so now my d drive even though it says 500 gig storage here i will change that label it actually is now one terabyte and i can do the same over here uh, the problem is is they have to be uh, concurrent so that one i will probably make as an e-drive is kind of like a little backup drive but yeah this actually ended up working out not exactly how i expected it but it did work out in the end which is awesome the problem the main reason i wanted to try to do it this way of restoring it onto this from the image is because we've got fire capture we've got sequence generator pro we've got asi cap uh, cpwi we've got backyard eos sequence generator pro and backyard eos are licensed copies ascom is on here all the drivers are already here all of that i was going to have to redo if i had to reinstall everything i would have to make sure my licenses got on there i would have to go and find those emails get my license keys all that good stuff because they're not always readily available in the software you know for privacy whatever reasons some applications hide your key or they they show a portion of the key and the rest of them are hidden with asterisks or pound signs or whatever so that's perfectly fine but we are working now and i can now use this device as i was using the kotlin pc at the ota as my remote pc and yeah so i'm glad i got that figured out um, to to recap to get this accomplished um, personally i highly recommend uh, a chronos true image it allows you to create a bootable flash drive at which point you can do a full disk image of your hard drive take that image and restore it to another hard drive that's what we did in this case we connected the Kylix PC to the monitor power supply and all that we booted using the true image software or bootable disk we had our uh, I think I misspoke earlier I said this was a two terabyte this is actually a five terabyte uh, portable drive I put this on we connected that up uh, and we booted in, used our true image, created a true drive backup, partitions, everything. So it is a essentially a clone of the disk. The let's bring the Kotlix back. So we did the uh, cloning of the disk for the 64 gig SSD, which had our OS on it as well as our data store drive, which was the 500 gig hard drive. At that point, we removed the Kotlix PC and we did the same thing. We connected up our true image software USB to the Geek Plus, connected up our external drive where our backups were and then we restored those drives. We restored the OS drive, the boot drive to the M2 SSD and the data store we restored to the SATA hard drive. We then, I then booted into Windows, made sure everything came up. Now, obviously this is gonna be different hardware, different, uh, components so it will need to 
do some driver updates and different things. So I would highly recommend if you're going to be doing this. Can you do it in the field? Yes. Um, we brought it inside so we could do the video, number one. And number two, uh, it's a little bit more of a controlled environment. When you are connecting up, Windows may not have the needed drivers for the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi should work, but if it does not, the LAN should accept basic Windows drivers to at least get you network connectivity to connect to your router via the Ethernet port so that then you can go and do your driver updates and all of that good stuff. So. I think with that, I'm actually going to end this video right here and say that I am extremely ecstatic now that I have a PC that will support the power on when I hit the uh, wireless power adapter out at the OTA that, you know, should, I use, uh, I think I may have mentioned it in the rig as it currently stands multi-part series. I have a GE uh, remote power outlet. It allows me to control via, via an app whether the outlet is on or off. And that way, if for some reason I oversleep or what have you, the rig will automatically shut off. Um, but on the same token, I can, before I head out, I can remotely turn on that outlet. That way, by the time I get out to the, to the telescope, to the rig, it's already powered on. I can check the status. I can check all that. This will be powered on. It'll already be booted into Windows. Everything will be good as far as that part is concerned. All I have to do is remove the cover and go on. Now, of course, if I've torn it down previously and I'm setting it up, it's a different story. This is very useful for when I'm, that power adapter is very useful for when I have a string of three or four nights and I'm leaving the rig set up overnight or from day to day and putting a cover on it when when I do have to set it up and, you know, on a nightly basis or whatever, as soon as I plug this in and I give it power, it's going to boot up, which means by the time I get back inside, get back to my laptop and remote into this, it will already be booted up, ready to go. It will have already detected the USB connections to the various hardware. And all I should have to do is connect or open up my software and make sure everything is ready, good to go, connect to the devices and start my imaging session. So previous, which that part was not an issue before other than the fact that I had to keep turning on the Kotlix and having that power button broken and having to short two pins to get it to turn on was a small pain, but a pain nonetheless. This removes one of those pain points because as soon as I apply power, it's going to turn on. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about pushing a power button and potentially breaking it. Um, this one seemed more sturdy, but it is what it is. So with that, I'm going to say I'm very happy. Uh, I, as of right now, I want to say as long as you understand that the M2 drive has to be your bootable drive, this is a nifty little box. If you want to do your own remote observatory PC, it's relatively lightweight. It's, I think the unit itself weighed less than the hard drive did. They were very close. Um, and this one, even with those cables connected, 
is actually, um, yeah, they're, they're pretty close in weight. I don't have a scale here to uh, weigh them, but they are pretty close in weight. So that's not going to impact my OTA at all that the weight of the Kotlix was already accounted for. So even if it's a, you know, quarter pound or half a pound more heavy, it, it will not impact my payload capabilities. Uh, I am well within the specs of the CGX at this point. So yeah, I am very happy with it. I am, I would recommend this or something similar. Do your research, find one that works for you, but I will have a link in the description, obviously, uh, for this as I do with every video uh, I've done thus far where I have equipment, I have links in the description and full disclosure, these are affiliate links. So if you want to support me and my efforts in this hobby, uh, please click on the link, buy something. It doesn't have to be what you clicked on. It can be anything. And I will get a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a cent for each transaction. So every little bit will help. But with that, I'm going to say thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you actually got something out of this one. Uh, this was definitely an exercise I thought in futility, but we, as we all know, if you learn something, it's not a failure. Initially, I thought this was going to be a failure, but I learned something. We overcame, we adapted, and we actually got it working in the end. So this was a success. So, yep. Hope everybody's staying safe and healthy out there. As always, clear skies and have a good one. Thank you for watching yet another video from the Astro Magic Junior channel. Really appreciate your viewership. In our upper right, we have the latest video we've uploaded. In our lower right, we have what YouTube might think you would enjoy. And in the lower left is our subscription button. Please like this video, subscribe if you so choose. As always, clear skies, have a good one.